can I improve on the Joyo Ultimate Drive? I mean, it's called the Ultimate. Hello people, Joe from HelloZeroFX here. Welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be taking a normal Joyo Ultimate Drive and seeing if we can change it to close to an OCD from Full Tone. Now, apart from the obvious visual upgrades, we're gonna be putting in things like vintage resistors and vintage capacitors that I know most of you guys love and there's some real haters out there. So everyone, please let me know in the comments what you think about me putting vintage expensive components in cheap Chinese pedals. Cheers. Regular viewers will know that I love to set out an A4 piece of paper with all of my components on for any of these mods. However, today we've only got four components. So I figured we'd just lay it out like this. We've got a 1.5K resistor, a 470K resistor, 100K audio pot or log pot, and one 100NF capacitor. Well, actually this is a 91NF capacitor, mainly because I've got these really cool old Philips um, tropical fish caps, and I thought I want, uh, you know, I want to use them. So let's get cracking. Here we have the Joyo Ultimate Drive PCB. First thing to note is that these wires attaching the board to the stomp switch board are absolutely atrocious. I do recommend replacing them, but for today, I've just added some, um, some epoxy over the top of them, so then they don't come out while I'm doing the mod. The first mod we're gonna do is we're gonna change out the volume pot for this 100K log pot. Now, this is this pot here. If you wanna see how I remove parts from a PCB, please go ahead and watch my BD2 mod video where I explain how I remove parts from the board. Well, we've hit our first hurdle, who would have known? So first of all, looking back over the, the schematic and looking at the board itself, this pot is actually a 500K pot, not 100K. So I've got to change it for a 500K log and not a, a, um, not a 100K log. So I very nearly fell into my first hurdle. I made the mistake. This is why you should really lay out all your components on an A4 piece of paper before you start. Next, we're gonna change the taper of our tone pot. To do this, we're gonna solder a 1.5K resistor across the two outside wipers of the pot. Now, you may find it easier to do this on the underside of the board. I'm gonna do it here. Um, and not only that, when someone opens the back up, they can see that the pedal's been modified. Now, handily, my resistor is exactly the width of the uh, of of the um, soldered pads inside here, so I'll be able to just bend the legs straight down in this sort of fashion, uh, and they should go straight on there. I'm not going to like try and slot them inside of the um, inside of the hole because obviously the pot legs are going in there. What I am going to do is I'm just going to solder directly to it and then bend the resistor up, and there we have it. Our resistor is now on top of the board and we're going to do the same thing again for our game pot which is this one here currently this is a one meg pot so we're going to solder a 500k resistor across it and that will bring down this value accordingly and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to solder it on the top of here so that then when someone opens it up they can see this nice vintage resistor And again, there's our next resistor in position. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install our nice Philips tropical fish cap. We're gonna be replacing C9, which is situated here, which is an electrolytic cap with this cap here. If you wanna see how I go ahead and re uh, replace capacitors, again, I've mentioned it. The, uh, the BD2 video I did is linked above now. I, I definitely um, show how to manipulate the legs and how to get these, these caps out. There is C9 replaced. Now that'll give us a bit less space in the pedal. It definitely sound a bit better. The one thing that Joyo did wrong when they were, well, mainly the one thing that they did wrong when they were cloning this pedal is this diode here, which is labeled as D2, is a germanium diode. And it's actually been put in the wrong way around. The silk screen on the PCB is, is actually wrong. So I suggest 
um, clipping it out and then putting it back in from from this side but flipping it over 180 degrees I'm going to check uh, if I've got a replacement diode rather than trying to save this one because they're a bit of a pain to get out in one piece here is the germanium diode that I've just took out of the pedal now the leads are a bit short on this for me to turn it round and put it back in and they're really sensitive to heat so taking it out I could well have damaged it we'll see in a second now if you go back to my tube screamer video you'll get a really boring please don't fall asleep a really boring description and a, a tutorial on how to test diodes and how to retrofit them into your pedals now I haven't got one of these diodes I'm assuming it's a I don't know I don't even know what type of diode it is I haven't got one of them but I have got this old Soviet um, this old Soviet germanium diode so what I'm going to do now is I'm, if I don't throw my screwdriver everywhere first what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to see uh, uh, my fluke can test um, the forward voltage of diodes again I did describe how to do this in a video above um, I'm going to test both of them and see what forward voltage we have to see if we're in the ballpark. So the one we've just took out tests as 0.254 and the one that I'm hoping to put in tests as 0.314. Right, that's close enough for government work to me so I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, vintage Soviet germanium. Just a side note, as you can see here this old Soviet germanium actually has the diode symbol on the sides of it there. So that really helps in orientation. But I'm pretty sure that the diodes you guys are going to be using um, may not have that on. So using a multimeter to test it is, is pretty much essential. Now, as you can see here, that's the diode in place. It's a little bit close to this resistor, but there's enough space in between them. And again, like in previous videos, you'll see that I've raised my components off the board just to keep them out of the way. When you're doing this, the best thing to think about is these two jacks have to fit in the pedal. So as long as you're below them, you're good. Right, it's time to get this back in the pedal and hear what it sounds like. Before I put this back inside the enclosure and do our sound test, if there's any pedals or designs that you would like to see me mod, please let me know. I'm, I'm happy to do any videos that you people can suggest. Uh, I'm, I'm here just for the fun of it. I do hope to do some mod kits in the future. So maybe people can follow along with these videos and then use some vintage parts that I've got in stock to modify your own pedals. Let me know what you think about that too. Mm -hmm. 